going to go through each of these little paragraphs here, and we're going to have something to say about each paragraph. Let's start off with the first part here. The school district, the unnamed school district, in partnership with the family and the community, family, what, what family, what, what, what partnership are you talking about? What, what, I, I, you're, 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 you're proposing a whole code of conduct. And there was no conversation with the family or the community. This agenda came to us, this initiative, whatever you want to call it. This came to us fully formed. And what are they striving to do here? Strives to promote good citizens. Good citizens. That word citizen, that means someone who is pro-state, pro-government. That is, well, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna argue that this this is essentially promoting the state, promoting government is 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 what it's all about. That's what this curriculum is about. It's not about teaching, reading, writing, arithmetic. It's about creating good citizens, i.e people who support government, who support the state. What a coincidence. The public school, which is run by the state, is working to create people who support the state. It's as if Burger King had stepped in and began running our schools and they developed a program that was designed to promote people who would eat at Burger King when they grow up. The Student Code of Conduct is a document to assist, to assist in that endeavor. Item number two here. Our framework for citizenship seeks to build a safe. Okay, what do you mean by safe? If you're talking physically safe, that's one thing. Are you talking safe spaces? Are you talking safe from controversial ideas? What do you mean by safe? Caring and respectful learning community based upon four components. There you go with that word community. In and of itself, community is quite an innocuous word. But, well... It had some other meanings to it. Let's let's go to the next part here before we... We'll probably address the community issue as we go along. So, we're going to get to the first item. The first... The... Let's go back here. What do they call them? The... The four components. So, we're going to get to the first component of four. Universal values right away. Right away, you should have all kinds of alarms going off. Universal values, there are no such things as universal values. Who are the ad wizards who came up with this marketing program? How could you possibly imagine that anyone can design a curriculum around something called universal values? Just in case you don't know, value, value is always subjective. When you're talking universal values, by the way, yeah, that's that's the kind of language that the uh, statist uh, commies and socialists use. They believe in, in universal values. The right, You might want to Google the labor theory of value, which fancies that you can absolutely put an objective scientific definition to value. Now, I'm not saying that that's an exact correlation here, but right away when you see that phrase, universal values, you know there's something afoot. And if you're talking educators, educators who fancy that they know what's best for your child, if we go back here to they 
Uh, they are building a safe, caring, and respectful learning community. They know what exactly they mean by safe and exactly what they mean by caring and respectful. And they're the professionals. If the professionals are telling you right away that there is such a thing as universal value, you need to not trust that professional because they don't know what the hell they're talking about. There is no such thing as a universal value. If there was such a thing as a universal value, then the struggle for man to define morality in an objective way would be done. But it still continues. No one has yet to produce an objective definition of morality. Which, by the way, morality and values, they're, they're almost synonymous with one another. So what, what do they identify as universal values? Well, there's, there's courage. There's empathy. Courage. Courage. Who defines courage? What, who defines empathy? I mean, I understand if I could say, you know, courage, you know, you're, you, you have fear and you face fear and you, and you go forward, uh, which in and of itself might be great. But courage, I mean, you know, uh, uh, an Islamist is courageous. So is it, is it necessarily a good value? Is it really necessary that an Islam, if an Islamist is courageous, do we consider that a good value? Probably not. Empathy. Friendship. 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 Who, who are you to tell my child that my child needs to have friends? I mean, sure. I mean, by and large, I'm not necessarily against my child having friends, but 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 is it really the business of the school that was originally that the, the, it is designed to to teach your children R R R reading writing arithmetic? This is way beyond reading writing arithmetic. Now it wants to condition your children to believe that they absolutely need friendship, and that well you know what that's a subjective interpretation. Honesty, okay, uh, integrity. Kindness, loyalty, loyalty, loyalty in and of itself is not a good thing. I, well, I, mean, I, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say loyalty in and of itself is not a good thing. I want to say that that loyalty is not necessarily a good thing. If you're loyal to Hitler, is it a good thing that you're loyal to Hitler? If you're loyal to a state system that routinely locks people up and throws them in jails, threatens them with lethal force who have not actually hurt anybody else, if you're loyal to that system, that is not a good thing. Loyalty is not always good in and of itself. And why? Why do I want a state-run institution to teach my child to be loyal? Because what do you think the state-run institution is going to teach my child to be loyal to? The state-run institution. And then there's patience. And then we get to this loaded word, patriotism. Patriotism. Yeah. So in Soviet Union, when they taught them to be loyal to Mother Russia, is that a good thing? Was patriotism is a good thing? Was it? Was it? Is, is, is it? is it really? Do you, do you really want it to be the job of your school to teach your child to be patriotic? Is that a value? Is that a universal value? I can tell you one thing. Universal means all. Across the board, I can tell you that patriotism is most assuredly not a universal value. I, for one, do not value patriotism. I don't value patriotism because you know what patriotism essentially is? And I'm not saying you can agree with me or, you know, or whether, whether you agree with me or disagree with me. I'm making a point here that this is not a universal value. Patriotism is nationalism. If you are all on board with nationalism, then you go ahead and you sign this document with joy, with joy in your heart. Now, I'll get to why it is that I'm not going to sign this document, why I have not. 
chosen to 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 sign this document, even though the document doesn't really fully say it. it well, it doesn't. It, it isn't demanding that you agree with all these things. But be that as it may, what they are telegraphing here is that the the one of the purposes of this curriculum is to raise your child for you to to basically look to the United States of America and celebrate the United States of America. Now, I, I'm sure many of you probably don't have a problem with that, but what about the, the parents that, that don't necessarily want their child to celebrate the United States of America? Is, is, is it necessary? Do we, do we have some sort of, 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 of citizenship code, uh, uh, you know, we have to take a loyalty oath. Does a loyalty oath doesn't that sound kind of like something maybe that happens in North Korea? Is is because is is that what we're advocating for here? Because I am under the impression that that is exactly the road that we're going down here. Now, I am as I get into this, I'm going to I'm going to plant a little seed right now. When when I'm saying nationalism and I'm saying patriotism, watch it, watch it. Because this is a curriculum that has a word that we'll eventually get to, a phrase that we'll, we'll, we'll eventually get to that shows that this, this goes well beyond nationalism. Nationalism is the gateway. Nationalism opens up the door for a certain segment of Americans. I'll get to that. So then we have respect of others. Okay, I don't necessarily think that's bad, but... I don't, I don't, for one, <laughs> in any way, shape, or form, teach my daughter that you just respect everyone. You don't. Respect is something that is most assuredly earned. Now, just because I don't, don't, don't respect someone doesn't mean that I'm going to treat them rude or, or, or mean or, or anything, but, but I'm not going to give just anyone respect. You're going to have to demonstrate that I would want to give you respect. I'm willing to bet that they're not teaching that. What they are teaching is blind respect, and I would be willing to bet what they're really teaching is especially is, is respect for people in authority because that's an essential part of, of creating basically creating future supporters of the state, of the government. Uh, responsibility, self-discipline, tolerance. Well, there's a loaded word, tolerance. And if, 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 you, if you come at it from a perspective of what I've seen traditionally from what you know, the American left, if you will, uh, never mind that left and right are really not adequate terms to describe the different camps that that take that take on those identities. I'm not going to get into that. But if you if you come at it from the American left perspective, tolerance is synonymous with acceptance. It means not not. It means far more than hey. I I recognize that if you want to believe that, that's your right to believe that. No, it, it, it's, it's not just that you recognize that it's someone's right to believe that or someone's right to live a certain lifestyle that you might not uh, necessarily approve, but that you must approve, you must affirm. For the left, tolerance means affirmation. And a little bit later on, I'm going to get to why it is that, uh, well, tolerance is... I, I would put a, I would wager a fair amount that when they're using the word tolerance here, they mean it from a quote unquote left perspective. So what they're essentially talking about is teaching your child to accept, not just tolerate, but accept trust and work ethic, work ethic. Now, I know many of you who may stumble upon this video uh, or whether you're watching the live stream version or uh, the, the video, I know many of you probably embrace that phrase, work ethic. It's a, it's a, it's a uniquely American phrase, work ethic, and it's, it, 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 it creates a belief in work for work's sake alone, is, is where it leads to. It's the idea is that you know hard work is a reward in and of itself. 
which is total malarkey. I don't want my child to grow up with a work ethic. I want my child to grow up being self-reliant, self-sustaining, uh, responsible. I want my child to own their beliefs and understand why they believe what they believe. I want my child to grow up to, to not take from others, to not harm others. That does not require a work ethic. If my child can figure out a way to make it in this world, in which they're not, they're not violating others' personal space, personal property, whatever the case might be, if my child could figure out a way to make it in, the, in this world at the level that my child uh, uh, wants to live without having to do hard work, I, I embrace that. I completely embrace that. But you have a system, a system that is endorsed by, created by, assured by the state, the government, that puts human beings in a position where if they want to have the kind of life that they've kind of been to some degree conditioned to want to have, they're going to have to work long, hard, arduous hours for years and years and years and years and years. So the work ethic, it keeps people compliant. It keeps people comfortable with this idea that you have to work 50, 60 hour work weeks for years and years and years to make it in this world. It, it, it puts people in a position where they accept that, that they live in a climate in which if, if you have a husband and a wife, father and a mother, you have two parents, that, that, that both of them have to work. And hey, that's great when both of them have to work because that means that the state has all the more power to, to influence your child, which is, which is really, that's exactly what they want to do. And that's exactly what's going on here with this, with this, this twisted document here. Let's get to the, uh, I guess this is the, let me see this. This is the, whoops. This is the, the third or the second, what's this called? The four components. This is the second component. Global understanding. To develop respect and appreciation for all people and beliefs. Now, there you go. There, there right there, respect and appreciation. See, appreciation, that's the key. I don't necessarily want my daughter to appreciate all people, and I certainly don't want her necessarily to appreciate all beliefs. If she wants to, if she chooses to appreciate all people and all beliefs, that's her business. But appreciate? No. Respect? No. Not all people and not all beliefs deserve respect. None whatsoever. Well, I've not... There are some that do deserve, uh, I, would, I would argue subjectively that there are some that do deserve uh, respect uh, and appreciation. And, and even the ones that I would define and say, hey, yeah, that person deserves respect. Those, that, that, those people deserve respect. That belief deserves respect. Uh, you don't necessarily have to agree with that. I, for one, am not in any way, shape, gonna, or form going to respect the uh the the belief system of Pol Pot, who thought that it was a good idea to go out and murder more than half of his population, cleanse his his country of undesirables, so he could try to build a workers' paradise. I do not believe at all that that person, that the and the people that that agreed with him and work with those people. They don't deserve any respect. I will not appreciate them. I will not respect their beliefs. I will not re uh, appreciate their beliefs. So global understanding, that one, that really shows you. When they say tolerance, they mean it from the American left definition of the word tolerance. And global understanding. It's important that you remember that when we, we, when we get to another point down the road here. Uh, this, I guess I'll talk about a little bit here. 
when we're talking about patriotism and nationalism, I, I describe to you that this opens a door. It is, it is designed to some degree to uh, appeal to the American left and the American right. So the American right, for instance, they see patriotism. And they're like, yeah, man, uh, totally. Flag, rah, 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 you know, America the great, make America great again, you know? They, they love that. But the, but that's not where, where, where when, 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 when this <laughs> curriculum, basically, that we're describing here, which we'll get to the actual name of the curriculum. Interestingly enough, the, they don't get to the name of the curriculum until sometime. Uh, well, we'll get to it. When you when you when you look at the curriculum, it's actually designed. It's it's it 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 starts off with the United States of America. It starts off with loyalty to America, loyalty to the state of America. But it goes beyond that. It 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 takes your child into the United States flag system, if you will, and then it 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 brings your child beyond that. When they're talking patriotism, when they're talking good citizen, they're talking patriotism, a nationalism that is international in scope. Internationalism. <laughs> That's what they're really talking about. And when they talk good citizen, they're talking world citizen. That's what they're attempting to create here. So we get to the next one here, the last one. Community service to become actively involved in activities that improve our community. Community service to become actively involved in activities that improve our community. This isn't the, the, the R's. This isn't reading, writing, arithmetic. This is this is social engineering, and they, they, they seek to socially engineer your child to come to understand that the community is bigger and more important than your child self. Very, very little of the language that you're seeing here is geared at all towards the individual. Let's, let's, just, uh, let's just go back here to the... Uh, you know, the first part here, in partnership with family and community, strives to promote good citizens and community-minded. Community, community, community. Now let's get to the framework for citizens. Seeks to build safe, caring, respectful, learning community. Community, community, community. The universal values, courage, empathy, friendship, honesty, integrity, all of this. Uh, we're we're, we're going to get to respect of others and self. Okay, respect of self. Okay, there you go. Self-discipline. Self-discipline to what end, though? It's very clear when you're talking about the self, it's always related to the community. This program, this curriculum is not designed around your child. This is a program that is not designed to equip your child with the tools to make their own decisions, to define their own lives and live them as they please. This is a curriculum designed to teach your child, to condition your child, to brainwash your child that community is, is the most important thing. Above and beyond the self, the community is what matters. And that's why that la that last uh, that that last one means so much in the context. I mean, in and of itself, community service to become actively involved in activities that improve our community. I, I, a lot of these things, in and of themselves, may seem innocuous, but when you start to frame them all together, you start to see the underlying purpose behind this code. 